Hello and welcome to the video. This is a very quick video for a Patreon of mine who has asked about what the process is to make a lens profile in Gyroflow. And it's actually not as tricky as it appears. So Yeet, hopefully that's how you pronounce your name. This is for you. Now, this it's already covered in the documentation in quite a bit of detail, but it's one of those things that I think it's easier once you've seen somebody do it. And the great thing is, is that there are a massive amount of both official and unofficial lens profiles for the different cameras that are kicking around. So if you want to do it, you can actually pick it. Now we're going to do it here with a camera. And what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to go into the first bit here. I'm going to click in the left hand side and I'm going to open the target. Now this is the target that we're going to need to take a video of with our action camera that we're going to calibrate. And what we need to do is start recording and then start moving it around. Um, ideally, you kind of want to have the chessboard filling the whole frame. You want this chessboard seen from a distance at each angle can't really do this on a curved monitor. That kind of ruins the whole thing. I found that doing it without the lights on uh, is the best way to do it because then the camera gets a nice clear view. And ideally you need a minute or two of footage seems to get a good idea, but move it around like this, get it into the corners, each edge of the video frame aligned with the edge of the chessboard. If there is a screen on the back, just do your best and guess. Any frames that can't be used for the calibration are just discarded anyway. So if it doesn't have a screen on the back, I tend to give it an extra 30, 40 seconds just to make sure that I absolutely have all the pieces that I need. With that done, then it's time to actually upload that footage into Gyroflow so we can actually create the lens profile from it. So now we have that, we can upload the file, the video file that we've just done. Click on drop video file here. I've copied the file onto the desktop and I'm just going to select it. It's going to be imported into Gyroflow and it's going to appear here in the middle. So this is the one we've just shot. It does have gyro data in it, just happens to be a GoPro I'm using, but it could be anything. So now we have it in here, we can actually tell Gyroflow to actually create the profile. Now, I would recommend filling all this information here on the left-hand side so that you can remember how you set it up. Personally, I don't upload the ones that I create until I'm really happy that they're great. And then I'm just gonna click here to auto-generate. And this is the bit where it's going to take a bit of time. What it's gonna do is look at each of the frames, look at the checkerboard and take account of the checkerboard orientation and how it's, being distorted by the lens as it's moved around. And this can take quite a long time depending on how quick or slow your computer is. And it's also worthwhile keeping an eye on how many frames are being picked up because the Gyroflow software will want enough frames with a checkerboard in all the different locations, both close up to the lens, further away in the corners to be able to kind of map how the lens distortion actually works. And I found that this is something that occasionally I have to do two or three goes on to be happy with the way that it looks when it's applied to the final footage to get rid of the lens distortion. So this is just going to work its way through and eventually it'll get to the end. And if it's successful, it'll kind of appear on the left hand side. Again, this is really about how long the footage is, but also how powerful your PC is. Now it is set and we've got it here. We can see some information in the left hand side. It's an opportunity now for us to save this lens profile. Um, I would just click on the um, save it to the local hard drive into the templates folder. I would give it a name that you're going to remember so you can find it version one, version two, whatever is something that I tend to use until I get one that I really like and I'll delete the others and rename that one final. And that's where it's finished. And then I will do this several times until I'm happy with how the lens profile works. And then if it works really well, I might upload it. But again, there is the opportunity to download lots of these that are already created and you don't have to go through this entire process. The library these days is actually really good. The trick is matching not only the camera that you have, but the lens that you're using and also potentially things like the resolution and other things too. 
Personally, I tend to just create profiles for my cameras for my favorite settings. And then once I'm happy with them, keep them on a local drive. And then they're the ones that I use whenever I feel the need to use gyro flow. So hopefully um, that's helped you. And now you know how to create a simple profile. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.